Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Preparation for the cementation procedures, a final uh, spray uh, air water rinsing of the prepared tooth is going to be done and drying and placement of uh, cotton roll isolation in this quadrant. Now the preparation uh, of that tooth and the area with around the adjacent tooth will be dried thoroughly with the air syringe. And a uh, cotton pellet moistened with Saltrol is used to cleanse the entire prepared cavity. This solution will remove any uh, residual oily substances remaining from the temporary restoration and any debris or any minute uh, particles of uh, debris from the previous uh, adjustment procedures. And the casting is also cleansed internally with this saltrol solution. Now to the mixing of the cement. The uh, zinc phosphate cement is mixed, uh, having placed uh, increments using a measuring stick for the measurement of the powder. And uh, that's one large end and one small end compacted and dispensed onto the mixing slab with a slight excess in the corner of the slab if needed. That powder has been divided into uh, six increments which are uh, added at 15 second intervals and the total mixing time for this zinc phosphate cement is 90 seconds to bring it to the uh, primary uh, consistency or so-called inlay or cementation consistency. Tighten up your shot and take the stopwatch out of it. Now while the cement mixing is being completed and the uh, cement is being placed and as a lining into the casting, the cavity varnish is placed on the prepared cavity. A moment of drying takes place and another coating is placed so that there are two thin coatings of varnish placed on the prepared cavity. All right, a little air to be sure that there is no excess remaining varnish. small amount of cement now is going to be placed into the prepared cavity in the proximal and cervical areas particularly. This provides assurance that any uh, brief seepage of tissue fluid that may take place during this process will be expressed away with that
with that uh, cement. The casting is now inserted. Seated first with finger pressure. And then with the orange wood stick, close together please, squeeze it tightly. You need an explorer to confirm the marginal seating. It's determined that the casting is seated. Now if you squeeze again firmly, and I'm going to shake this to get some vibration. All right now. Open easy, please. And now with uh, another cotton roll, the, the uh, excess Cement is to be wiped away. Close again, please, now. On this open. Close again. Squeeze it tightly. Very good. <clears throat> now with the hand burnisher. The margins are burnished with this hand burnisher. It will be difficult to visualize uh, all of the marginal are areas during this procedure, but all should be covered. Uh, turn toward me, please, and open. Necessary to remove that for a moment to gain access to the lingual aspect. <clears throat> the uh, FP1 instrument uh, is helpful because it's a thinner bladed instrument and can uh, is accessible to the uh, proximal areas. for burnishing in those areas. The purpose of this burnishing, now close together please, loosen a moment, close again. I'm going to shake it once more just a little. Open please, close, squeeze together. The purpose of the burnishing at this stage now is to uh, close the uh, gold, fine gold uh, marginal areas against the tooth, uh, those areas which have been developed to fineness that, and a thinness that may uh, be displaced due to the hydrostatic pressure of the uh, cement that is being exuded from the cavity during the compression of the casting onto the tooth. This. Uh, uh, compression now uh, will be altered. Open, please. Removing the orange wood stick and placing of the cotton roll. Close together, please. Hold that firmly now. And this cotton roll allows for a little closer uh, interocclusal dimension. Uh, great pressure still maintained, and uh, this will be maintained until the cement has. Uh, had adequate setting time of at least seven minutes. All right, after adequate setting time for the <clears throat> zinc phosphate cement, open please. Cotton roll is removed. <clears throat> the excess uh, cement now is, which is hardened, is going to be removed. Turn that way a little more, please. All 
all the cement must be removed, and especially that which is uh, in the interproximal areas. These embrasures tend to be filled with the cement, and uh, so much care must be taken to be sure that all these areas have the cement completely removed. So it's a matter of going around the entire tooth and restoration and removing the cement, not only from the buccal aspect, but from the lingual aspect. Have a water and air spray. gets to be a little bit of cement on the adjacent teeth also. Now, merely going around the tooth, and particularly in the subgingival areas with an explorer, may not ensure 100% removal of the, of the cement. Rinse again, please. <laughs> so the final evaluation on the cement removal should be to take the air syringe in one hand and the mirror in the other and go around the entire cervical area. This deflects the gingival tissue away from the tooth. Explore, please. Uh, dries out the, any residual cement and makes it uh, thoroughly visible so that it can be completely removed. Now, I'll be going around the entire tooth to uh, be sure that in this process all of the cement is removed. After complete remo removal of the uh, residual cement, uh, one other thing that should be evaluated is to be sure that the occlusal relationship has been maintained and that is established prior to cementation. So with shim stock, closing together please, going around the mouth. Open, close, open, back on the second molar over here. Well, I tore it there. I've been pulling on it. Uh, so there is uh, maintenance of balanced uh, occlusal contacts on the centric stops around the mouth. Moisten your lips, please. Now, in order to have a final look at this cast restoration on the uh, maxillary right first molar tooth, See an occlusal view. And we see the buckle view. During the casting with the replacing the mesial buckle cusp and the distal buckle cusp and remaining uh, in tooth structure. And the lingual aspect, could we dry that, please? Especially the lingual. Thank you. The lingual aspect uh, has the casting carried uh, to a, 
about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half from the free gingival margin. Gruzel aspect uh, again. Take out the lip now. Take out the lip and see the bulk up. Let's see the rectum. Again, the buckle view. Turn back toward me slowly now. Uh, some more till we can see the uh, buckle contour. forward a little more. That's good. Slowly. That's good. Can you uh, see now the contour of the crown? Harmonizing with the contour of the uh, buccal surfaces of the adjacent teeth. Now sometimes on a cast restoration where they Mesial buccal aspect uh, of a bicuspid or molar may be considered an aesthetic uh, uh, problem due to the fact the uh, metal is showing on a wide smile. It's possible to dull that with the, uh, very simply with the, in this case, the use of a fine sand disc, which uh, would just take a little bit of that uh, reflective character off the tooth are off the casting and uh, so just very lightly Effort is made to be sure that the that the uh, gold there has been slightly dulled and will not be an aesthetic compromise during smiling. Now, if you could smile to see if that is uh, if that is visible, it will not be uh, highly reflective. So this brings to a completion this uh, complex cast restoration procedure on the maxillary right molar tooth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.